Good evening and welcome to Prime News on my major prime. My name is Genda Peljum Blanche King and you're watching us live from Douala in the uh, littoral region of the country after the launch of Sinopharm vac Sinopharm vaccination campaign in the country uh, yesterday in Yawande. Modalities pertaining to the distribution of the vaccines have been laid to clarify the population. In the following report, Darling Gondi tells us more. 200,000 Sinopharm vaccines for an anticipating population of 27.04 million people is one of the biggest stakes the Cameroonian government is tackling in terms of the distribution of the first batch of doses which landed Sunday, April 11th at the Yaoundé Simulan International Airport. While receiving the job yesterday at the COVID-19 care center in Yaoundé, Minister Manawoda Malachi of the Public Health added his voice to Prime Minister John Guti to say priority pertaining the distribution exercise will be given to health officials across the country. Reason why he stands out as the only government official to have been administered of the vaccine. However, with the existing worries in the minds of many Cameroonians, the major concern by many has been the modalities for distribution. And according to this strategic plan, after the administration of the vaccines on health personnel in the country with special interest interests on the frontline workers who have direct contact with the COVID-19 patients or the testing crew, the first batch of vaccines will be distributed in 243 accredited vaccination centers in the 10 regions. Starting from the most affected COVID-19 regions as follows, the center region will benefit almost 44,000 doses of the vaccines, while the next badly affected, littoral, will get 34,380 doses. The far region will benefit 24,640 doses and the least goes in. Also, once individuals are vaccinated, they will be issued a vaccination card by the vaccination team. However, exceptions to the vaccination campaign include pregnant women as well as people with fever in high temperatures ranging from 39 degrees Celsius or above. On the part of the government, the backdrop behind the procurement of these vaccines is aimed at reducing the mortality rate and the widespread of the COVID-19 pandemic in the country. A surveillance system will be put across health districts for proper follow-up of the vaccinated. Meanwhile, the government of Cameroon will, on the 15th of April, launch the vaccination campaign for its health personnel. Also to be taken into consideration, the most vulnerable and persons exposed to the disease estimated at an over 3 million persons will be the next recipients. And finally, persons who voluntarily decide to receive the anti-COVID-19 vaccine from China would be vaccinated. Cameroonians have equally reacted to the news of the arrival of over or about 200,000 doses of Sinopharm COVID-19 vaccines in the country, expressing fears and worries over the effectiveness of the vaccine. The first 200,000 doses were received into the country over the week, and these doses are expected to curb the high number of positive cases in the country. Eileen Sama spoke to some people who expressed their worries through a microphone. Cameroon has been hit hard by a second wave of the pandemic with its health ministry reporting over 61,700 cases and 919 deaths since the outbreak of COVID-19 with a daily average number of coronavirus related deaths reaching a new high of more than 53. For two years since the outbreak of the pandemic, the country has implemented various barrier measures to fight the deadliest virus with very few persons respecting the measures and others doubtful of the reality of the existence of the virus in the country, reason for the high spread. But with the new Sinopharm vaccine's strategic move by the government of Cameroon, the protection of its citizens against the virus through the vaccination scheme will definitely need more sensitization and reassurance as many are unwilling, uninformed, and even bitter about the turbulence time faced by the country. Let's take a listen to this Vox Pop. 
I was recently visiting, so I think a growing up and sent it for those that visited to my own father. I heard that some other food that eating even I myself am afraid of eating it because I don't know if they want to buy it, they want to buy it, 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 buy I don't think that the corona is very wide because there are crises in Cameroon. They are killing people. People are dying more than the the things that they are saying that that is, uh, is in Cameroon. But they are not even looking that one. But now they want to, to kill people because for me, I'm seeing that it's killing. Our mother likes to use the vaccine. Yeah. 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 Yeah
The rate of maternal mortality in Cameroon still remains alarming. Worse still, with the ongoing security crisis plaguing the restive Anglophone regions of Cameroon, many young pregnant women in the southwest region of the country have undergone cruel child delivery processes as some have put to bed in bushes without adequate antenatal care. We are looking at a situation where the crisis is actually displaced a lot of these women and we have situations where they put to bed in the bushes, they are not able to actually maybe attend antenatal clinic, they don't have even the money to buy basic kits that are necessary for the delivery process and by so doing when they practice the delivery process with aseptic, uh, with techniques that are actually liable to infection, so we are trying to see how we can target those areas that are far away from the hospital. It is in this light that the Matis Foundation, a non-profit humanitarian organization with mission to cater for moms and babies, launched its activities in the southwest region. You can see some of them give birth in, inside the bushes and some of them have been beaten by snakes during a level inside the bush. And this one has made us so sad. We were like, what should we do? What should we do to see that our women attend ANC before giving birth? So when Mata came up with this initiative, I was like, wow, what an intelligent midwife. You know, Mata is still a student midwife um, in the University of Boya, but she has already gone extra mile to see that she laughs of what is happening. So. I'm so glad about it. Also, during this twin ceremony that heard in Boya, the Matis Diary, which is an educative piece to teach pregnant women on how to manage their pregnancy for the next nine months, was launched. Given the fact that the world has gone Android, it has been a social media form in order for us to reach that that we put on men and their health. And now the Pomo and Baby Diary, the Pomo and Baby Foundation comes in as the reach out sector of the diary. Because of young girls, because the young girls are the future leaders of tomorrow. And if they are not focused on today, the rate of maternal mortality is not going to drop to the zero we will imagine it to be. So we have the change starts now. We have to eradicate it, especially from the young women that we aim to reach out to the level of the society. At the end of the event, gifts were also handed over to some 15 expecting mothers while they celebrated the birth of a foundation that has come to alleviate their health issues as pregnant women. <laughs> Still talking about COVID-19 and uh, measures or ways to curb the spread of the deadly virus in the country, the Limbe City Council has donated some face masks to the uh, population of Limbe and its environs to boost the fight against the deadly pandemic in the country, considering Limbe is one of the hardest hit uh, uh, towns in the southwest region of the country. The city mayor, Andrew Mutanga Mojimba, led the team recently as uh, Kumo Norimbom tells us. The population of Limbe and its environs have been called upon to strictly respect the measures put in place by the government to curb the spread of the coronavirus pandemic in Limbe and the nation at large. The call was made recently by local administrative authorities from the three subdivisional councils in Limbe alongside the Limbe city mayor, Mutanga Andrew Monjimba, and the district medical officer, Dr. Constance Nguninje, as they embarked on the sensitization visit to sensitize the population on the prevalence of the second wave of the COVID-19 pandemic. The team, headed by the city mayor and the district medical officer, visited the Limbe New Market, Old Market, Slaughterhouse, Half Mile and Mile 4 Park, educating the population to strictly observe preventive measures to contain the spread of the virus. The senior divisional officer for FACO, Engamba Emmanuel Ledu, took keen interest on the sensitization exercise and join the theme to distribute face masks to some market users. Going by the city mayor, Mutanga Andrew Mojimba, the fight against COVID-19 pandemic requires a collective approach, reason why he chaired the theme of three mayors of the subdivisional councils in Limbe and the district medical officer for Limbe Health District to educate the population on the realities of the coronavirus pandemic while urging the population to stay safe. The city mayor frowned at Limbetinisans who prefer carrying the face mask in their pockets while in public gatherings. He called on them to make it a duty to wear their face mask to protect themselves and others from contracting the virus. Coronavirus is real and that it is causing a lot of damage at this moment. All the authorities in town have put their hands on deck accompany the Limbe City Council 
for this mass sensitization. You know that the market is the place where we have, it's difficult to maintain social distance. So we thought that we should distribute masks and sensitize the population in this uh, market to, because they cannot uh, do social distancing. They can put on their mask. A huge consignment of face masks was equally distributed during the exercise with city dwellers scrambling to secure one for themselves. The Limbe City Council has equally planted a number of hand washing points in markets and streets to encourage the population on frequent hand washing. The third and last term of the 2020-2021 academic year started yesterday across the national territory under strict respect of all anti-COVID-19 measures at Juval School Complex in Douala. School authorities have stepped up measures to curb the spread of the virus. Lasha Kinsley was there earlier today. He gathered the following. The third and last term of the academic year 2020-2021 has begun. Starting within a special context, COVID-19, many schools in Douala have adopted measures that will keep the students and pupils safe. Javol Bailungo School Complex is one of the few schools in Douala 5 that has a disinfecting point. In view of taking strict measures against COVID-19 in Duval, we, we have put a disinfecting point wherein um, students, like parents, they all pass through to be disinfected before they get into school. Actually, um, a new measure put in place to fortify the other measures we have put in place, washing the hands and using the hand sanitizers. Putting this point in place was just to go a step further to show our engagement against COVID-19. Nganje Mbonte is a science teacher at Juval School Complex. He says nobody is excluded from the process of disinfection. In fact, uh, talking about the beginning or resumption of classes this morning, I'm teaching for five science and the way things were put in place, I'm quite impressed because we began at the gate where our hands were disinfected and everything. And then we meet the students in place who are ready to start classes. Kwan Jeremy is the Dean of Studies at Juval School Complex. It is a back to school that we had made preparations for a week ago. And our main plan was the reinforcement of various measures against COVID-19. With the resurgence of the virus and its effects on the field, at Juval, we decided to step out of our comfort zone to do the extraordinary. Reason why a disinfecting point has been installed, making us to have moved a step forward in the fight against the pandemic. Parents and guardians are very impressed with the new disposition taken by the school authorities. I am very surprised to have arrived this morning to see that this infecting point has been installed. We appreciate this measure taken to fight the health crisis. It is only safe for this reporter to state without any fear of contradiction that Juval School Complex has set an example for other schools to emulate when it comes to fighting COVID-19 within school milieu. Like most or other schools across uh, the country, schools in the East region have equally adopted measures to uh, boost the fight against COVID-19 in the country. And our reporter in the East region confirms that the attendance of yesterday was quite encouraging. Jean Didier in the French language. Après deux semaines d'interruption de cours, due notamment au congé de Pâques, la communauté éducative de la région de l'Est a réuni avec les campus scolaires dès 7h30 du matin. Élèves et enseignants ont répondu présents. Ici, au lycée technique de Bertois à Cano, c'est presque le 100%. Seuls quelques retardataires restent attendus parmi les 1210 élèves régulièrement inscrits. Le troisième trimestre est le trimestre où les, au cours duquel les candidats aux examens présentent ces différents examens. Il s'agit donc d'un trimestre capital déterminant pour la vie de chaque élève et de chaque parent. 
Je fais comprendre à nos enfants l'importance qu'ils révèlent au troisième trimestre. Et je leur ai fait savoir que celui qui veut réussir doit travailler avec beaucoup de détermination. Parce que là, il s'agira de présenter des épreuves, n'est-ce pas, aux différents examens. Au niveau des tout petits, maternelle et primaire, c'est la même ambiance. Les salles affichent complet et les cours sont dispensés ça et là par les enseignants. Les classes d'examen n'ont presque pas connu des congés de Pâques avec les cours de rattrapage pour combler les oreilles perdues avec la pandémie du Covid-19. Le système de mi-temps a été implémenté afin d'éviter les contaminations. C'est le cas du lycée bilingue de Bertois qui accueille plus de 700 élèves déplacés du Nozo et enfants réfugiés centrafricains. Nous avons environ 700 élèves déplacés qui sont ici qui fréquente normalement comme les autres élèves. Et quand tu viens ici, tu ne peux pas savoir s'ils si sont déplacés ou pas, parce que nous avons pris les dispositions, les accueillir, les mettre dans euh, les conditions normaux. Les résultats des différents examens montreront à coup sûr l'impact du coronavirus dans le système éducatif de la région de l'Est. Minister Delegate at the Presidency in charge of Defense, Joseph Betty Asomo, has warned and cautioned candidates and parents to stop all attempts uh, of corruption into EMEA and the National Gendarmerie. This comes after widespread criticism from uh, the uh, population who question the enrollment strategy. Audrey Zatza has more in the following report. The request formulated by Minister Delegate at the Presidency in Charge of Defense, Joseph Betty Asomo, in his press release yesterday, 12 April 2021, aims at putting an end to corruption in official examinations and recruitment in EMEA and the National Gendarmerie. According to him, ever since the announcement of the launching of the entrance examination into EMEA and the National Gendarmerie, as well as those of recruitment in armed forces, services have been crumbling under requests and recommendations accompanied by receipts of deposits of files trying to obtain admission of certain candidates which defies the principle of merit into these national institutions. Reasons why he has called on candidates, parents and relations to stop all attempts of corruption to get admitted into these institutions as their attempts will be futile. Minister Delegate therefore reassures that officials of the Ministry of Defense have been given instructions to strict vigilance, moral probity and firmness as regards such acts. It is to be recalled that Joseph Betia Somo had announced the recruitment of 29,230 personnel in armed forces by 2025, recruitment which are most often subject to all maneuvers in a context of generalized corruption and ambient unemployment of youths. And in sports, we talk uh, Cameroon Elite One Championship in Pool A. AS Fortuna is first with 11 points, Ghana Stadium third with 10 points, Fovu fourth with 8 points, and uh, Union PWD, Jico FC with 6 points each. Dragon, Avion, and Edin Sport are sixth. Yafu is last with a zero point in Pool B. Panther is first place with 9 points. Apiges third with eight points, Cotton Sport fourth with six points to its credit column, and Toner occupy the fifth positions with five points each. UMS, New Stars, and Yosa last in the standing with four points. And it's with that we end today's edition of Prime News on my major prime. Thanks for being with us. See you tomorrow at 6 30. God willing for another edition of Prime News on my major prime faith. Tata Berenio coordinated the news produced by Ewane Eli Nolinga. Genda Peoji Blanche King is my name. Stay tuned to my major prime. Coming up next is Prime R with Kim Lunat. Enjoy today's fresh edition of Prime R. Happy viewing and good night.